Today we're looking at the importance of managing stress for our happiness and health. Alternative therapies can sometimes be expensive, but there are a few creative ways you can relax from the comfort of your own home. Sangeeta Lee continues our report. Melody, rhythm, emotion. Music can help soothe the soul and calm the nerves. Dr. Suzanne Hanser is chair of the music therapy department at Berklee College of Music in Boston. She has devoted much of her career to understanding the link between music and stress. The palliative nature of musical activities is such that we can deeply relax when we listen to a piece of music. Dr. Hanser asks students to act as patients and focus on their own feelings of stress. They listen as she plays repetitive melodies with a Native American flute. It'll take your mind off of whatever you're going through and, you know, put you in another place. Students also improvise and create music as a group. Music, says Dr. Hanser, is a sensory activity strongly tied to memory. Therapists use music to help people recollect past peaceful times. Oh, you're in distress. You're facing an interview or um, having an interaction with someone that you've been avoiding. You can begin to center yourself with the music that automatically and without thinking about it has this association or memory or image in your mind's eye where you can be. Berkeley junior Whitney Jones is eager to explore a career in music therapy. By helping this one individual reduce stress or teach them techniques of how they can cope with issues in their life through music is, is raising the status quo of society. Visual art can also alleviate stress. Denise Malice is an art therapist at Lesley University in Cambridge. We oftentimes uh, feelings can be very bottled up inside and it's hard to really differentiate what sometimes even a physical feeling is from an emotional feeling and so uh, art can often help to really differentiate that by having someone express it in a visual image. PhD student He Jin Yu draws and makes collages daily to deal with the stress of work and study. She also keeps a visual journal to record her emotions throughout the week. After doing some uh, visual journaling, I feel more comfortable because I can see what I am thinking and what I am feeling. And it's very visible and also it's tangible. So it helps me to think about myself. I can actually uh, testify that art changes lives and I've worked with some people for maybe 15 years and um, they have replaced very self-destructive behaviors with creativity um, that's given their life new direction and meaning um, and I think that's huge. For over 5,000 years, meditation has been practiced as a way to center the mind and achieve a higher state of consciousness. At the Cambridge Zen Center, people like Jane Dobish meditate in the tradition of Korean Zen Buddhism. So what we try to do is breathe in and breathe out and stay in the moment as best we can. And it's not just for the purpose of peace and relaxation only, but it's also to develop clarity of mind. They also take part in walking, bowing, and chanting meditation. The clue to clarity, Dobish says, is not to identify with every thought passing through the mind. As you breathe in, you can say in your mind, one, breathe out two, in three, and so forth, to ten. And you'll discover uh, usually, actually always, eventually, that you get to three or four and already then you start to think about this or that. And as soon as you realize that you're doing that, you start over again. Bo Mi Choi teaches social studies at Harvard University. She meditates after a stressful day of lecturing. First, you know, I, I start breathing, you know, deeply. And then um, at the beginning, like, 
just try to just concentrate and see what's going on in my mind without judgment, just a very gentle, accepting way, just like let, they say, you know, thoughts are like clouds that appear and um, then disappear, and you just don't hold on to them. Choi says the peace she finds on the meditation cushion helps her welcome each new day. Things just don't touch you as quickly. You know, you have like this sort of lag time but which is a good thing, I think, because we are usually so reactive. And I think the way in which you can achieve that is by, yeah, sitting quietly, just find a corner, you know, during the day and just, um, and just breathe. Meditation will soon have a new platform online. Using a virtual world called Second Life, neurologist Dr. Daniel Hawk of Mass General Hospital is developing a program that allows people to meditate on the internet. Some people like to call it a, a virtual world. I think that's the most usual term for it, but it's, some people call it a synthetic world. Second Life participants create virtual versions of themselves called avatars. Within the medical community specifically, a lot of folks use this space to to communicate and travel in ways that normally they wouldn't be able to in real life. Marco Sinelli is a medical student who helped create the Second Life environment. What they can see is the poses that they're trying to do so that they can try to recreate that in real life if they wanted to. And also just looking at what the avatar is doing, there is a sense of peace. In the coming months, people will be able to socialize with others and attend weekly yoga classes from the comfort of their home. We really focus around three main premises. Uh, number one being a social area where people could come and kind of find out um, what other people are up to. The educational area is, is going to be where folks come to get their, their weekly lesson plans. And then the third and final piece that we wanted to focus on was creating a dedicated meditation area where people could come and kind of, you know, as they look out onto the ocean or the virtual ocean, they could find a, a place of serenity. Dr. Hawk, who specializes in epilepsy, hopes that the ability to receive instruction and meditate online will improve the quality of life for those unable to travel to a meditation center. I see an improvement when I really work closely with patients to help try to reduce their stress, and so I see this as the next sort of formalized approach to doing that. I think it'll be very valuable. Up next, the study of positive psychology from an expert at Mass General.